Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Welcome to Greater Harvest Christian Center Churches Worldwide, where I am Archbishop Dr. James Rice, and our chief apostle is Apostle Dr. J.G. Rice. We thank you for joining us for this 12 o'clock noon live broadcast. Hallelujah. We are located at 10943 Moncrief Dismore Road in the beautiful city of Jacksonville, Florida, 32219. And we invite you out to come in and enjoy a word with us. We are empowering lives and inspiring possibilities. This is a church of change and power. If you're ready to change and have power in your life to manifest miracles, to manifest health and happiness and wealth, and all the things you've been dreaming about, then this is the place for you, Greater Harvest Christian Center, Church of Change and Power. Give God some praise, Harvest. Wow. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated as we are talking about part three, I believe, of plugging into the power. Amen. And I just want to have a conversation today, and hopefully I won't get too preachy, but we want to talk about plugging into the power of prayer. And the type of prayer I'm talking about is what I've coined or coined or as, as meditative prayer, meditative biblical prayer. That means that prayer from the inside out. And if you go back on the other uh, parts on YouTube at my channel at Bishop James Rice, on youtube you should be able to find part one part two and now part three should also be there or on facebook and uh you'll find me on facebook and they'll be there also but the bottom line is that we have to understand there are many modes of prayer uh paul even says that we pray all types of prayers and we pray without ceasing but this particular prayer is dedicated to the internal manifesting the external in other words we are going in to manifest miracle signs and wonders on the outside so we talked about briefly in the review that step one was to find the kingdom of god which is on the inside of you and go make step two was to make a prayer closet now the kingdom of god is on the inside that's obvious so it's uh, in your thoughts in your mind in your feelings it's inside of your makeup, your personality, who you are, because God comes to reside in you. And he told you this quite plain, that you need to seek first the kingdom of God. So you got to find God and find yourself. I'm going to say that again because so many people run past that scripture like they really understand it. And they really don't have a clue that God is talking about not only discovering uh, him, but you need to discover you And discover him in you because the him in you gives you the power. And that's where the kingdom of God is all about. And once you read these scriptures again in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then you should recognize that he never was talking about a kingdom of God that was uh, in heaven. Although he called it the kingdom of heaven, but he was talking about the heaven in you. So it's all about what is happening in your internal world and in your internal being. Because in order to operate on the level of spiritual dimensions and and miracle signs and wonders, you got to be a spiritual creature. Behold, all things are new. You have to become somebody new in order to manifest something different so step one in this type of prayer is always discover that this is an internal prayer closet prayer because you have to go on the inside into the kingdom of god and talk to god in thoughts and feelings you know thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the heart and so we want to talk to god with our mind and our heart about the things that are concerning us and the things that we would love to see manifest in our lives. And again, so that's step one. You got to discover that. You got to go spend time there discovering that. How do I get there? Well, you know, we're going to have a phenomenal workshop come up at the first weekend in 
October. Yeah, October 1st, I believe that's it is. It's the first Saturday, and we're going to spend time teaching you how to discover your inner world, how to access it, how to get there, and when to get there for the best time to manifest that which you have been hoping for and dreaming about, and how to pray it into existence with a meditative prayer. And again, listen, this does not take away from all the other prayers, and neither do we ever want to. Because we have discovered and been discussing here at the Harvest that there are two kinds of prayer closets. There's a prayer closet inside you, and there's a prayer closet outside of you. Glory to God. And sometimes, you know, you're going to pray in the outer prayer closet, or you're going to be praying on the inner prayer closet. Now, so we're talking about this inner prayer closet, and that was really step two that we talked about in the uh, series. But then when we go down to step three, we talked about being persistent. So our men ought to always pray. And I'm just doing a little review before we go to this last session here. Men ought to always pray. You ought to be persevering in the things that you are speaking to God about. And what we've been learning here, that prayer is merely a conversation with God. It's not so structured and strict that you got to say this and you say it this way and that. But personal prayer is having a personal conversation with God about you and life and what you would like to see and like what you would like to create in your life. Because God created you in his image and after his kind. And if you are created in the image of God, then you ought to want to be like God, not be a God, not that you are God, but you are his child and every child resembles or looks like the father and the mother. And so what God is saying that you ought to be acting like me and be creating things that you do not see in your life. And again, you know, I know people have been taught to beg God for this. and But here's the bottom line. The God that you serve has given you the Holy Spirit and the power and the angels that when you access that from the inside out, you can cause it to happen because you are releasing the very power that he placed in you. How could he ever say the exceedingly, the abundantly, the above through the power that worketh in you if it was not in you to exceed, to live in abundance, to excel, to go beyond the common and be uncommon? Glory to God. Amen. And so this is what this prayer is all about, spending that time with God. And I wish I had more time than I have, but I want you to make it to that workshop because we're going to spend time, break it down, put it on recording so you can go home and eternalize the steps and the procedures and the strategies to become new and become that type of supernatural being that can manifest from the inside out. So that's just a little review. So let's talk about the last thing that uh, in our steps of just plugging into the power of prayer. You know, prayer is just awesome in what God is doing in our lives. And I want to just kind of read this note here. My, my final step, and I talked a little bit about it, about prayer and word on phone, is that Mark eleven twenty four. Now, we could stay on this for a week dissecting because once you say it, then you need to know how to do it. This is not just a time to know but this is a time to know how, because really I've, I've had enough preaching on, so I know, but what I didn't know is how, how do I manifest it? And of course, I know that some of the religious people will say, oh, just have faith in God. But then I remember God says that faith requires work. So the work is the strategy. The work is the procedure. The work is my part that I need to do when I'm exercising my faith. So you can't just sit down and act that God is going to drop manna from on high. You're really going to have to access the kingdom of God, which is inside of you. And you got to seek it first. And the stuff that you want will be added unto you. Once you gain access to the kingdom of God inside of you, then you'll understand how to manifest it, how to make it happen. I've been teaching here at the harvest and uh, glory. That's a good place to praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Glory to God. Amen. And, you know, I've been teaching here at the harvest that 
no longer will life ever happen to us. No longer will life just happen to us. We're going to make life happen from the inside out. We will be creators of our lives and not that life is just happening. We trip, fall, and bump our heads. We're going to call those things which be not as though they were, and we're going to manifest them from the inside out because the kingdom of God is within us, and now all things are possible because God in Christ is with us. So this, this verse in Mark 11, 24 is packed with supernatural divine in formation and power so he said therefore i want to say unto you that whatsoever thing you desire so now in this final step of prayer when you go in your prayer closet when you are on the inside when you have closed your eyes and you're spending time with god and you're talking to god in thoughts and pictures and feelings instead of words from your mouth you have access your soul realm and we're talking to god in that manner this is a supernatural prayer instead of a physical go prayer because when you pray with your mouth you got to engage your brain and you're trying to think what to say next and so you don't mess up so you don't sound like you're crazy especially if you're praying out loud but when you're praying with pictures when you're praying with feelings you don't have to think about what you're going to say it's already there and then the holy spirit can make intercession for you and make a moaning or a groaning that you don't understand that word is moaning and groaning is another form of language that is divine that you don't have to do anything but make the mental picture and the emotion that somebody say the desire Woo! that desire is that fashion that passion that desire is that fire of the holy ghost that desire is that thing that make you shout about it before you see it that desire is that thing that that makes every the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and you feel like it's already happened wow i already got it and until you manifest that kind of desire nothing is going to happen for you said, Bishop, how do I do that? Well, we're going to teach you that in the workshop. We'll teach you how to manufacture that desire, even if you are so-called depressed. I can just give you a little simple technique because it's hard to be depressed if you just take a moment right now and smile. I don't care what you were going through. If you literally smile, it changed your physiology. So listen, your physiology can take can change your psychology. So you felt better just by smiling. You turn that frown upside down. Glory to God. That's just a simple technique. We're going to go deeper. We're going to show you how to access the very kingdom of God on the inside, how to mentally rehearse the things that you desire until they manifest in your life. But the good thing is that when you understand these principles of mental rehearsal, repetition, and becoming what's going to happen to you is the passion for it is going to explode in your life. Glory to God. It's nothing like feeling like you already got it. Come on, somebody say, it's nothing like feeling like you already got it. <laughs> Glory to God. That makes you excited. You know, they, people can look around and say, I don't see it. You ain't got to see it, but I saw it before you see it. Amen. Glory to God. I give you an example one time that I'm reading this book on vision. This was a powerful quote, and I never forget it. They talked about Walt Disney uh, building the first Disney World, a Disneyland in California, and he built Space Mountain. And the story was that, that came from his wife that Walt would stay up late at night or early in the morning designing Space Mountain. He would give it to his engineers. They say, well, we don't know how to do it. He said, yes, we can. We could do it. We could do it. I know how to do it. And he would give them insights and in, uh, how to overcome the problems. And so Walt died before they finished the first Space Mountain in California. And so the senators came out and everybody came to celebrate. And one of the senators that was speaking what said that I wish Walt was here to see it. And his wife tapped him on the shoulder and said, Walt saw it before you saw it. Glory to God. I wish you would just look at somebody and say, I'm going to see my healing before you see it glory to god i'm gonna see my wealth glory before you see it i'm gonna see my happiness before you see it 
Because I'm going to see it in my heart, in my mind, and I'm going to say it out of my mouth before you see it. And you'll say, wow, Bishop said it was going to happen, but it's already happened for me. Glory to God. My miracle has already manifest for me. I got the desire for it because I've already received it, so I could just dance, 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 woo, all night. Glory to God. So that's the, that desire and that's how it's built up into you like a fire. You keep putting more logs on it, putting gasoline on it. You just can't. I just got to talk about it. I don't see nothing happen. You don't have to see it, but I see it. I see it in my mind's eye. I see it in my spiritual mind. I'm saying it in spiritual prayer language. I'm saying it with my feelings and my emotions. And my body is walking like I already got it. So, so when you build up the desire... Watch this. When ye pray, the desire has to be first. You got to be a what, what's your passion, really? Like I was sharing with the leaders today, you can't say, well, I want a six-figure income. Come on. I just need a hundred thousand dollars. No, you got to say, I believe in God for a hundred thousand dollars, and I know it's already done. And then you got to walk around like it's already done. I got a friend uh, called Elder Tommy Belton, and, and Chief Apostle always teased us. I'm like, you've been around that biggity Tommy Belton because he, he have a walk that says, I've already got it. Now it's already done. Amen. Some people call that cocky. I don't care what you call it. I'm going to get what God said. Hallelujah. You can call it cocky. You can call it arrogant. You can call it all that, but I'm not going to be broke. I'm not going to be sick. I'm not going to be without my miracle. I'm not going to be sad, broke, and disgusted, but I'm going to have the blessings of the Lord. Somebody said desires, desire, 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 passion, like the first love. Even in the Ephesian church, the Bible talks about one of the seven churches that say you have forgotten your first love. In other words, you forgot your passion. You forgot your desire. You forgot how it felt when you felt first ran into me. You forgot what it felt like when you first discovered the power that I put inside of you. You forgot what it felt like when you first discovered that faith will make the mountain move. You forgot what it felt like when you discovered that belief will make all things possible. Somebody said, don't forget, don't forget, but don't, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Desire. When ye pray. When ye pray. So then it's obvious that God intends for us to pray using two closets, the inner closet and the outer closet. Most of us know how to do the outer closet, but the inner closet is where you go in into your mind, into your emotions. And you start picturing the things uh, that you're saying to God. You're speaking to him in your thoughts and you are speaking into him in your plans and in your visions and ideas and concepts you're giving over to God. Amen. So then it says, when you play, you believe. Now, that belief is all about, like I teach here at the Harvest, belief is a mind thing. Somebody said belief is a mind thing. Mm -hmm. Belief is a mind thing. In other words, in order for belief to happen, it has to be in your mind. You have to see it in your thoughts. It has to be repetitiously so ingrained in your thoughts that it's like it's already happened. I believe that it is. Amen. Somebody say, I believe that it is. Mm -hmm. That means that, again, it's not necessary for anybody else to see it. It's not necessary for anybody else to believe it. You just have to believe that it is. Hallelujah. So when you pray, belief is necessary. So when I'm talking to God in my thought language, when I'm talking to, to him in the mind or talking to him in my visual pictures and my visions, I already believe. Amen. I'm not talking to him and asking him for it. I already he already knows what I desire. He already knows what I have need for. I'm just showing him the pictures of what I believe. Glory to God. 
God, I feel like shout, but I can't run. I'll, I'll run past the camera. But listen to me. I'm what I'm showing God is what I believe. Oh my God. I'm showing him my faith by the pictures and the feelings that I am showing him in my inner prayer closet. I'm celebrating him for something that is already done. I'm celebrating him because it's already manifest. I'm celebrating him because he already brought me out. I'm celebrating him because the miracle already happened. Somebody say, I believe <laughs> when I pray, when I pray. So this is all about step four. When I pray, my passion is on fire. When I pray, my belief is as though it is already done. That's why he said, believe that ye have what? Receive them. So that means you can have a multiplicity of things that you're believing for. And the great thing about talking to God with your mind, you can go through those things. Glory to God in your mind. Glory to God. You, you can tell him all about it in your mind. Your words can't do the justice of a picture because a picture can say a thousand words. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again because you might have missed it. So a mental picture of me talking to God in my mind's eye, in my heart, in the way I feel, speaking to him in emotions and the language of the brain, which is the word, the thoughts. When I'm speaking to God in that language, I can just conjure up a mental picture of that which I want to say. And that one picture can say a thousand things. Oh, man. When you pray, believe that you received it, them. And then he said, ye shall have what? Have them. Wow. All because it started with the desire for it. And the desire has to be godly. You can't desire something that is outside of God's will. Okay? So it has to be lined up with the word of God. But you ought to have a passion for it. So we'll stick with some things. I got a passion for miracles. Somebody say, I got a passion for miracles. I got a passion for health. I got a passion for wealth. I got a passion for happiness. You ought to at least have those passions. Glory to God. And most, most everything else is a subcategory of those things that I've, I've shared with you. And so you ought to have a passion for those things. So when you go in your prayer closet to talk to God, then you ought to be believing that those things that you have a desire and a passion for have already happened. One of the things and one of the strategies that we have been exploring here at Greater Harvest is how to not only believe that you receive it, but how to watch yourself in, uh, enjoy it in your mind's eye, i.e., I'm believing for healing from stage four cancer. Well, I'm going to close my eyes, go into my prayer closet on the inner side, and I'm going to start seeing myself unhooked from chemo. I'm going to start seeing myself, I'm going to start seeing the doctor's mouth drop open when he see that the results are negative. I'm going to start seeing the people start saying, I thought you were sick. I'm going to start seeing me running and not get tired. I'm going to start seeing seeing myself beginning to do the things that I used to do. I'm going to start seeing myself dance, 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 dance all night. And I'm going to start enjoying the vision coming to pass in my mind and in my heart and the emotions bubbling out with joy and tears while I'm in my inner prayer room, knowing that it's already done. Oh yeah, the body may be still acting up, still trying to act sick, but I'm going to tell the body in the name of Jesus Christ, it's already done. In the name of Jesus Christ as I have believed it is already done. I am already healed and I'm enjoying it right now. I see it in my mind's eyes. I feel it in my heart and I'm going to speak it out into the natural world through my mouth. I got master in my mind. I'm going to master my ears. I'm going to master my eyes. I'm going to master my tongue. I'm going to master my emotions and I'm going to master my environment until the all things are possible because I believe. Glory to God. <laughs> All through what? Prayer. My inner closet. The, my time to make what hasn't happened on the outside to make it real on the inside. And then I'm not walking around to me, I'm just waiting on God to heal. I'm already healed. I'm waiting on God. I need God for a financial miracle. Financial miracle. I just created my money. Hallelujah. 
I created my money. I created the opportunity for money to come to me. You got to create a path for money to find you. Money circulating all around you. You got to have a cup to get the money out the stream of flow. That's why it's called currency. But what kind of cup? Well, there's a couple cups. There's a job cup. There's an investment cup. There's a business startup cup. Come on, somebody. There's a service cup. There's out doing a, a, a community cup. Whatever cup you use, glory to God, it will collect money. <laughs> Man, I, I love God. Amen. So listen, I'm almost through. I, I said I wasn't going to stay long because we're going to do some exercise here at the harvest listen if you're still looking for a church or church home and you want to come and join us you need to come here to 10943 moncrief dismal road in the beautiful city of jacksonville 32219 listen it should be streaming along the stream and don't forget to sow a seed amen i know like when you get to the end i talk about sowing people click off so i fool you i said it in the middle amen y'all be seated then i got a couple more points that i need to be yes if it's good, sow something. Amen. The information to sow a seed is on the line. If not, search it out, find it. Because this is a good church. Amen. Matter of fact, matter of fact, the dollar sign good church is the cash app. Amen. This is a good church, and this is a good word because we believe in the strategies. Like I said before, and I'm gonna keep saying it, it's not a time to just know. That's 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 the thing. You will see me always using scriptures that you already know. But I want to teach you how. How do I make it work for me? How do I make it manifest? How do I participate in the creative manifested process of a miracle? Amen. Now, why do I always got to go look for Joe Smuckatelli to do it for me? Uh, 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 Prophet Boo Boo, you know, Pastor Bubba, and all these folk that I got to run to to try to get it when it's in me. And listen, I have nothing against all my men and women of God. All I need you to do is walk with me, touch and agree with me, speak it over me. And if God told you something, it's already going to be confirmed in me anyway. So we're going to walk together and touch and agree. And the power of God is going to fall. Amen. So I ain't got no problem with that. But people come. Let me just say this. And so that uh, the people of God, that you understand, when you come to me and you empty, how can I fill you up? You got to come to me already filled with faith, already filled with belief. Or you got to say, listen, like the man said, help me in my unbelief. Then I'm going to spend time with you to get you filled up because you're not going to drain me of my resources, my spiritual resources, trying to fill you up. And you got to leak in your bucket. Glory to God. Amen. So it's so important to solidify our faith bucket and our belief bucket and keep it filled with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keep it filled with expectation for the possible to be possible, the impossible to be possible. Amen. Glory to God. So look at this. So desire is one of the strongest emotion. It stresses the strength of feeling and often implies strong intention or aim. You ought to have an intention to see it manifest in your life. You ought to have a smile on your face. Amen. When you notice yourself drifting off and not, 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 not focusing on the goodness of Jesus, then smile. Bring yourself back to the good things of God. When the enemy and the world shows you bad things and bad things happen all the way around. I'm not saying they don't exist, but you don't have to focus on it. Whatever you focus on, that's where your energy goes. I shared with somebody today uh, when we were in leadership and we were talking about this uh, event. I'm riding down the road and I said I was on the phone with somebody. And I said, boy, it is this rain is terrible out here. And then immediately my mind said, ah, oh, you need to change that. And I was explaining to them, had I continued, I turned it around and said, this, this rain is beautiful. Look at how it's watering the trees and God's watering it. And it's going to make me appreciate the sunshine. So I turned it around. But look at this. If I had continued in the negative vein of thinking and said, this rain is terrible out there. Then the next thing probably would have been, boy, look at these people driving crazy in this terrible rain. Man, somebody's going to get in a wreck out here. 
and it will continually went negative. So by the time I get home, I'm already negative. My brain has been releasing negative hormones. So now my body is feeling negative. Yeah, it's terrible. Look at all this trouble. Look at all these possibilities of negative things happening because it's raining. And now I'm home and I'm walking in the house and now I'm negative. Oh, look like you ain't fixed nothing to eat. Don't look like the house cleaned up. What you been doing all day? Amen. And you're wondering how you got there. It started with that one seed, and now the harvest is carried to your home, to your day. You go to bed. Oh, it's probably going to be another terrible day that the Lord has made. I might as well be sad. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But that's the reality that many of us live in. And so, again, it requires these five things. And uh, we've been sharing it the harvest that, you know, because we're, we're, we're turning into a supernatural church, divining and devising supernatural intentions in our lives by using by mastering our thoughts. And we are mastering what we hear and we are mastering what we see, mastering what we say. We're mastering how we feel and we're going to master our environment. In other words, I'm not going to stay in negative situations. I'm not going to stay around negative people. I saw a slide the other day. This really blessed me. This is what it said. It says that, listen, I'm changing my life and I'm changing the negative people from around me. So if you don't hear from me, you're probably one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. I thought that was cute. Amen. You, if you don't hear from me, you're probably one of those people. Amen. So understand desire is the starting point of all achievement. Not a hope. It's not a wish, but a keen pulsating desire, which transcends everything. Amen. And that's way we need to be when we did, when we pray. Listen. I want to conclude on this, and this will conclude this on prayer. And it's a familiar scripture. He says that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Now, I'm going to just share some things that might be controversial with you, um, but that's okay. It's true for me. Is that you know, first, you got to be God's people, but God's people are not people of non-faith that doubt and talk negative. They talk church while they're in church, but then they talk world when they're in the world. So, and humble is all about lowering your own self-importance. That means you got to get to the inside. You got to get to the inside closet. And, and pray and seek his face. Now, if the kingdom of God is on the inside of you, where do you need to be on the inside? You're not going to see God and live on the outside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ask Moses. Amen. And then turn from your wicked ways. That word wicked means it's, it comes, it's a derivative of the word wicker. So, so then, then wicker furniture is twisted. So then when he's talking about turn from your wicked ways, twisted truth. Turn from that twisted truth. Thinking like, yeah, I know the Bible say that, but. See, now you got twisted truth. I know he said he's going to heal me, but the doctor say twisted truth. Oh, I know he can bless me financially, but my bank account on zero. I don't see how it's going to happen. Wicked. You twist it. You're twisted in your, your belief and your faith. And your emotions are twisted because you don't never feel like what you're saying out your mouth will come to pass. You have to turn from that. Now, one of the things that I want to share with you, you got to practice turning from that. Because without mental rehearsal, that means that getting your thoughts to constantly say, this is not how I'm going to be and have a picture of what you want to be. And repetitiously place that in your mind's eye, in your mouth, in your ears, in your eyes, and then feel it in your heart. It's never happening for you. If it, if it is, show me how you do that. I know what the preachers preach. I'm on TBN every day. I hear preaching all, 24 hours a day. And I hear all the preaching of this is what you do. 
but I never hear this is how you do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, have faith. Okay, I got faith. The mountain's still there. Oh, oh, believe it or move. Okay, I believe it. 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 And you say it a hundred times, but nothing happens. Because your internal state hasn't changed. You have not changed on the inside. And until you change on the inside, nothing will change on the outside. And that's going to require some work. Faith without the work, without the work of vision, without the work of mental rehearsal, without the work of repetition, without the work of building the fire of desire, without the work of constantly going into your prayer closet and spending time with God, not spending time with television and Netflix and, and Hula and all these other stuff. But if you are not spending time with God early in the morning and late at night, don't expect God to give you his time. He said, then I will hear from heaven. Now, listen, I know that God resides in the third heaven. I, I, you know, I got a doctoral degree. I know that. But let me just help you with this. Since Jesus came, he said the kingdom of heaven is where? Inside you. So where is God going to hear from? Inside you. So why are you praying outside and expecting something to happen? Oh, yeah, he can hear your words in your outer closet. But Jesus said the kingdom of God is inside you. Seek first the kingdom of God and the righteousness and all things be added. So therefore, if the kingdom of God is inside you and all things are happening inside of you, then you need to be inside giving God a picture of your desires and your heart's desires and giving him a picture of his words being your words and your thoughts and your minds and the desires of your heart and you will have what you say. Whosoever shall say unto the mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea in doubt not in his what heart why don't you doubt in your heart because you've been practicing receiving it already how can you doubt when you have so repetitiously believed that it's already happened how could you doubt when you have already practiced mental rehearsal that you heal how can you doubt when you've been shouting about my healing my blessing and my miracle how can you doubt so i doubt not in my heart because I feel like it already happened. And then you will have whatsoever you say, not just out of your mind, but you ought to be saying it out of your mouth. You ought to be hearing it in your ears. You ought to be mentally rehearsing it in your mind. You ought to feel like it already happened in your heart, and you ought to change your environment like it's already done. Give God some praise. My God, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God, it already happened. My God, my God, it already happened. My God, my God, it already happened. My God, my God, my miracle already happened. My God, my God, my deliverance already happened. My God, my God, my deliverance already has happened. My breakthrough already happened. My money already happened. My house already happened. My cars already happened. My children saved already happened. Is I wish you would touch ten people and say it's all already happened already happened already happened already happened listen I, i'm gonna close but I, I'm, I'm telling you this word bless you so i see dollar sign good church if you're looking for a church home now listen we won't have the best choir we may not have the best facility but we got one of the best words. Amen. And we're not just going to tell you about it. We're going to teach you how to be about it. Amen. So if you come and ready to learn how to change your life. Now, the preacher is not going to do it. But we're going to give you the tools and the strategies to start manifesting miracles in your life. Yes. To start manifesting deliverance and breakthrough in your life. Yes. And once you know that you can do it. What a mighty God you will be serving. And you will explode in your atmosphere. And your children will want to know your God. Your co-workers will want to know your God. The people around you will want to know your God. You won't have to beg them to come to church. Glory to God. 
because you will be the best church they will ever see. I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for your greater harvest, the few, the proud, the, the powerful. Amen. Proud in the things of God. Amen. We few, but we're mighty. We will take three and do what it takes 300 to do. Glory to God. We will walk into a broke down building and make it a mansion. Glory to God. We will leave, we'll leave a city and come to another city and start brand new and buy houses and land with money that we didn't have. Nothing but faith. Glory to God. That's the kind of church we are. We won't just go for a job. We create jobs. Oh, my God, I feel like preaching. <laughs> Woo, man, I tell you, we excited here at the harvest. So, you know, it, I mean, ain't nothing dead here but the, but but uh, death and doubt. And we put them out <laughs> in Jesus' name. Listen, again, we'll be back at 6 o'clock for another powerful word in the Lord. And then we'll be putting the subject up on. Uh, text somebody, share this message. Go on YouTube, go on Facebook, tag and share all that good stuff. You know, share it with somebody. If it bless you, it'll bless somebody else. Somebody else needs to know that they need to pray from the inside out for the power to be manifest in their name. I say the one, I say to all that you go in. I say the one, I say to all you go in. I say the one, I say to all that you go in peace and live in abundance. Come on, give God some praise. Bye-bye till next time. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God.